Okay, uh, Uncle Dave's got a really interesting bird this time. This is a new one for me. Take it away, Uncle Dave. Uh, first of all, Job 12, 7, 9. I, I really like this verse. It says, uh, but ask the animal and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky and they will tell you, or speak to the earth and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? You know, when I think of this verse, you know, I just want to emphasize it before I get into the actual bird, uh, is that being outdoors in creation gives me a peace because I feel God's presence there and I see his love and all that he's done for us. And today's bird is, is just another example of the variety that God loves. And it's a red-headed woodpecker. Now the red-headed woodpecker can be found in North America, mainly in the United States, a little bit into Canada. Um, so on the map on the left, what you're seeing is the orange. That's where you can find the red-headed woodpecker only in the spring and summertime. And they migrate out of that area in the winter. The purple area, they're found all year round. Um, so here in Florida, you can see Florida in the very bottom. We have red-headed woodpeckers here in Florida. Uh, and then the blue, light blue, is where you can find them only in the wintertime. What type of habitat? Well, it depends upon where you are. But one thing is common, They, as you can see in the picture, they like to have an area that has some dead trees with very little underbrush down below. Uh, and that's where they feel protected. So that's where they will raise their young. Uh, and a lot of times they'll like to have a tree that doesn't have bark so the snakes can't crawl up. Um, in, but in some places they'll use pine. Like in the southern here, we have probably a lot of, we have oak, but we also have a lot of pine. And so you'll find them in the pines and in the oaks. Um, and another interesting thing about, we have them in Florida. I saw my only time I've ever saw a red-headed woodpecker was in Wakava State Park in Apopka. And what they're nomadic though. So this year I could have gone and seen them. If I go next year, they might not even be there. They may be somewhere else because they don't stay in one area all the time. So that's what nomadic means. When it comes to size and shape, you know, because one of the things I tell you is to look at the bird. You know, how big is it? You know, what is it? You know, what uniqueness does it have? Well, the red-headed woodpecker uh, is anywhere from seven and a half inches to almost ten inches. Uh, it's got the round head. You can see the rounded head. And it's kind of on the plump side. It's got a short tail, stiff tail. And, of course, the woodpecker has those spike-like bills. Uh, it weighs about 2 ounces to 3.4 ounces, which is about 8 quarters, maybe 9 quarters. The other thing you want to look at is color pattern. Now, the red-headed woodpecker, if you see it, there's no doubt what it's going to be because it stands out. The whole head is red. And then you have the white underbelly. And then the back, what you see in the picture on the right, the back looks like it's black with a white spot and then black farther down. Well, that white spot is the back side of the wings, as you can see uh, with a uh, woodpecker flying. So that's what makes up the colors. It's just black, red, and white. And they're all distinct, so it makes it easy for you to see and, and, and identify. Now, when it comes to food, the, wood, uh, the red-haired woodpecker eats all kinds of stuff. It eats insects, a variety of grasshoppers, honeybees, beetles. It, it likes fruit. It likes seeds, acorns. Uh, but one of the things that's interesting is the red-headed woodpecker is a very skillful fly catcher. And when we say fly catcher, there's a group of birds that actually have the name fly catcher 
because that's what they eat insects while they're flying. They catch them in the air. Well, the red-headed woodpecker and the Lewis woodpecker are two woodpeckers that actually go out and catch the insects in the air. So that's very unusual for the woodpeckers. And uh, the redhead woodpecker will feed on the ground all the way up to about 30 feet up into the tree during the summer. In the wintertime, in some places, they may go farther up to get the grubs. But they also do something else that is unique other than the acorn woodpecker. The acorn woodpecker will store acorns in trees and in buildings. The redheaded woodpecker will store nuts, corn, berries, insects, even insects that are alive, like a grasshopper. It'll wedge it underneath a bark so it can't move. And then it comes back later when it, if it can't find food, it has its storage or cache of supplies uh, that it knows where they are. And sometimes they'll move them from place to place. Now, when it comes to nesting, the male selects the site for the nesting hole, but the female will tap around that area to see if she agrees with him. Uh, and they, it could be pines, it could be maple, birches, oak. It just wants to be in that open forest area that I showed you at the beginning uh, with very little vegetation on the ground. Now, the nest itself, the male starts with a crack in the wood and, and pecks or makes a gourd-shaped cavity of 12 to 17 inches digging out. And it's about three to six inches across and 18 to 16 inches deep. And the hole itself is about two inches. And when you talk about woodpeckers, the shape of the hole for some woodpeckers will tell you what type of woodpecker it is. Um, for the Red-headed woodpecker, they, they have a two-inch round diameter, and they like to, to have, most of the time, trees without any bark. When it comes to the eggs, this is what I find very interesting. These small woodpeckers, you know, seven to nine inches long, uh, or seven inches area, they will have up to 10 eggs. That's unusual for woodpeckers. Uh, anywhere from three to 10 eggs. Usually it's around four eggs. Uh, but the other thing that's interesting, in the south here in Florida, a red-headed woodpecker can have two broods. And what we mean by broods, it means family. So they can have their nest of four eggs or whatever, raise them, and then have another one in the same year. So that's, that's uh, unusual for the woodpeckers as well. It takes about uh, 12 to 14 days before the babies hatch out. And then before they can actually leave the nest, it's almost a month uh, before they can actually uh, fly and leave the nest. And the eggs are pure white. Um, and the babies, when they hatch, they have no feathers and their eyes are closed. So that's why it takes a long time for them before they're ready to, to be on their own. When it comes to behavior, the red-headed woodpecker has some unique behaviors. When, it, when a male meets a female, uh, they will play hide and seek up a telephone pole or a dead tree. You know, one's on one side, one on the other, and they peek around the corners. So it's almost like seeing the squirrels when they play. So that's funny. Uh, another thing that's unique for the red-headed woodpecker is that it flies in a fairly straight line. Uh, most woodpeckers will beat their wings and then they drop a little, beat their wings and drop a little. So that's a unique for most woodpeckers. But the redheaded has a more of a straight line um, flight. Um, let's see. Their uh, predators or things that could eat them are snakes, foxes, raccoons, Cooper's hawks, Peregrine falcons, screech owls. So those are a few of the things about the behavior. And there's a lot of other things in there, but you know, I encourage you to research on the different birds. If you see a bird, research on it. And always remember Job 12, 7, 9, but ask the animals and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky and they will tell you. 
or speak to the earth and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these things does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? When you're outside and you see the beauty of creation, the trees, the flowers, the birds, the animals, give thanks to God for he has given them to us to enjoy, to love, and care for. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was great. How did you like that, kids? Do we have some kids on here? Any kids want to say hello? I liked it. Good. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad. Are you ready to draw? Okay. I'm Can I say ahead. something? I'm a yeah. first. Go right ahead, Mary. Dave, that was absolutely awesome. What a blessing to think of the magnificent creator we have from your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, outstanding. Okay, guys, time to draw. Get your paper out and let's see how we do on the red-headed woodpecker. Okay, this is pretty exciting. So I hope you have a lot of red out there. All right, so we're going to start with the tree that he's on. So let's make the tree on the side here and we'll make the bark. Going down here, a nice fat tree, because we learned that they like areas where there's just trees that have been, don't have a lot of leaves on them. So we'll just color in our tree a little bit here. Get a little color going so we have something to put our bird on. All right, got a nice, isn't it wonderful that things are beautiful, even if, there are things that are just like a gray tree. You look at it and all the texture and everything in that tree and all kinds of just different lines and things. A lot of times when I'm taking a walk, I say, oh, I, I wish I could draw that to look exactly like it. So you got your tree. All right, let's see how we do with our bird. So this guy, the tricky part is to get him so he's kind of standing on the tree, but let's get to start with his head. So we have his head over here, and then he's got that long beak, right? Oh, I think I kind of made mine's head a little too big, but remember what I said? We're trying, so it's okay. That's why mine's not always perfect. But I kind of want to, yeah, I don't like his head. I got to see if I can fix that a little smaller. In fact, I might even start over. Let's see if I do a little better this time. Make his head a little bit smaller than that. Yeah, I think I like that a little better. But everybody's trying, and you guys are going to send me your pictures. So let's see. Then we got to go down over here. Remember, he has that nice long feather. This part comes around and goes down to here and kind of comes back with these other feathers on the back. Let's see what we got here. All right, now we got to make his nice, fluffy white grass coming over to here. And let's make his foot is on the tree over here. And his other leg is over to here. It's coming, over, coming down to here. All righty. Okay. Now we got to make his eye the fun part. You know what I can't wait to do? I can't wait to get his red head in because that's when it's really going to look like it. I wish I saw that bird. But you know what? While I'm here in the church service, I have some little mockingbirds making a nest right outside my window. So sometimes if I seem a little distracted, like I'm looking in the wrong direction, I was looking at the little um, mockingbirds getting fed by their mama. All right. So remember, it goes about to here, and then the white part starts, and then we have it's kind of comes down. There's a little bit of the dark part here, then comes down to the feather. All right, and then we have some of these darker feathers over here. Okay, yay, now we get to do the red part. It's the part I can't wait. All righty, let's go over to the head now. Oh, this is where it gets exciting. Put his red head in. Oh, I wish I could see that bird. I tell you what. I would love to see it, but I'm very happy that I get to see the eastern bluebird. 
All right, let's see. Getting this redhead here. All righty. Now let's color in the black. A little bit here. Coming down, coming down. Okay. Getting a little furry areas in here. Oops. Oops. All right, we are getting pretty close here. Okay, there you go, guys. There's your little red-headed woodpecker. And um, I hope that you guys did a good job. I'm going to stop my share and let's see what you got to show me. All right, anybody want to hold theirs up now? Anybody have theirs? Do you have anything over there, Sarai? You're still working on yours? Anybody else have one they want to hold up and show us? All right. Well, I guess we have to wait to so put them in the newsletter. Um, and Marco, I think we got you unmuted now if you're ready for the story for the kids. Okay. Hi, children. This is the story for the children and all of the people that feel like a child. Okay? Okay. Oh. This is, this is a true story. It's a Bible story. I love the Bible stories. I just think they're wonderful. Well, halfway through this story, it's about, you're going to hear about a little boy. So you just perk up your ears to hear about him, okay? Well, this happened at a place called Troas on the coast of Asia Minor. Paul had just returned from Greece where he had gone to encourage the new believers. After spending a week with the Christians in Troas, he had met with them again on the first day of the week in an upper chamber. On the third story of some local building, the grand old missionary had no doubt already preached in the morning and perhaps again Sabbath afternoon. Then on the first day of the week, which in those days began at sunset Saturday night, he held yet another meeting. He wanted to celebrate the Lord's Supper before leaving in the morning. Nobody knows the exact hour when this meeting began, but we do know when it was interrupted and when it finally ended. Paul had so much to say and so many wonderful stories to tell that he prolonged his speech until midnight. How many people dozed during the long, long service, we are not told. But the name of the little boy who went fast asleep will never be forgotten. Eutychus was sitting in the window and sank down into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer. Evidently, the window was open, but the poor lad fell out and hit the ground with a fearful thud three stories down. You can imagine the commotion. Paul was forgotten. Women screamed and men rushed outside to see what had happened. Everybody was wide awake now as the word was passed from one to another. Eutychus fell out of the window and he's dead. A lantern held high in someone's hand showed where the body lay and a crowd quickly gathered around it. Nobody could see much in the dim light. Then Paul came striding through. Pressing his way to the front, he knelt down beside Eutychus and put his arms about him. Much as Elisha, long years before, had embraced the dead son of the Shunammite woman. After a few moments, he stood up again. Don't worry, he said, he's alive. Well, everybody was amazed. They couldn't understand it, but there was no doubt that what Paul said was true. Some of the members picked the boy up and took him home and were not a little comforted. They weren't comforted. You might think that this would have brought the meeting to a close. Oh, no. After a little break, Paul went right back to the pulpit and carried on from where he had left off. The Bible says that when he had gone upstairs again and had broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them a long while until daybreak and so departed. 
What happened to Eutychus afterward? We are not told. But when he grew up and heard his friends talking about that wonderful night when the Apostle Paul preached in his church, he must always have have had a feeling of regret. That was the greatest night in the history of Troas, and he knew nothing about it. He had slept all through it all. Children, it doesn't pay to sleep in church. (laughs) And that's the end of my story. Happy Sabbath.